let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just want to come before you and give you praise and thanksgiving. We thank you, Lord, for this day. For this is the day that you have made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for allowing us once again to be in your house. We thank you for our online listeners, Father God, that they wanted to get up and come before you and and join us as we worship, as we praise, as we hear the word. Father God, we just thank you. We want to thank you in everything and for everything, Father God. Lord, we thank you for our pastor and our first lady, the leaders of of this ministry, Father God. We just ask that you continue to bless them and watch over them. And no weapon that's formed against them or us shall prosper. Father God, we invite your Holy Spirit into this place. We ask that you have your way. We ask that you touch each and every one here and that's watching. We ask that that whatever needs to be done, that you will do it. Whatever is needed, Father God, we just ask that you touch, that you heal, that you restore, that you just, you just, just bless, Father God. We ask that you just have your way, Father God. We worship you. We honor you. We praise you. Father God, we just ask that you give us the desire to put you first in everything because we know that if we seek you first, the kingdom of God, that all other things will be added unto us. If we look out for your kingdom, you will look out for us. We ask that you just bless each and every one, Father God. And we just ask that you have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
to everything. My everything. My everything. My everything. My
to hear sing my every fear silencing my every fear I believe in you I believe in you you're the God of me I believe in you I believe in you
faithful amen he's faithful we're going to be today in psalm 46 today thank you god good to be in the house of the lord amen thank you lord thank you lord good to be in the good to be amongst god's people thank you god thank you lord we're in psalm 46 today we're going to read it in its entirety. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. He's good to us. Thank you, Lord. Better than we deserve at times, for sure. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. We're in Psalm 46 today. Thank you, God. When everyone's there, give me a good amen. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will, therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea, though the water roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with swelling thereof, say, Lord, there is a river, put a star, uh, beside verse 4, there is a river, streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the whole place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. 
he uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Shall I come, behold the works of the Lord with desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in fire. Put two stars beside verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will exalt it in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today. Thank you for us assembled in this room. Those that are, are tuning in online, Father, we thank you for our, our extended family. Father, we thank you that there is no distance in prayer. And we thank you that as this word goes forth, Father, that the, that the hearer will respond to this word today that this word would help them where they presently are today. We thank you that no weapon formed shall ever prosper. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for being a very present help. Thank you for reminding us in your word today. You are with us. You are for us and not against us. I thank you. I thank you for the anointing that destroys every yoke and lifts every burden today. Father, you said in your word to come unto you all those that are laboring and heavy laden, and you would give them rest. I thank you that your people are going to get rest from this word today. Your people are going to be comforted through this word today, encouraged through this word today. And we thank you right now that no weapon form shall ever prosper. And we come against any hindering spirit that will come against the word coming forth, dear Lord, from somebody being saved or, or delivered or set free, somebody renouncing those things, Father, that they should not have been involved in. I thank you that nothing would hinder this word today. I ask that I decrease, that you may increase that the Holy Spirit may move upon me at this moment and upon this sanctuary in a greater capacity. Guide us to all truth. We give you all the honor today. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Even if you rode together, thank you, God. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm glad you're here. Come on, look across your road. I'm glad you're here. Glad you're in the house today. Again, we've been saying that everything has been meant to try and separate us and cause distance with us, but we're thankful uh, that you pressed your way out today and amongst us today. Thank you for being in the house today. Thank you for those that are online as well. We thank you for our, our church family as a whole. Thank, amen. Psalm Psalm 46. How many know that they're supposed to be sung? They're not just really supposed to be read. That they're supposed to be sung, and and this. The backdrop of this is that he says that the chief musicians for the sons of Korah and a song of Alamoth, those were those were the, the highest of musicians and select songs they were supposed to sing. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. That God is not going to be our refuge, but God is our refuge. That at this very moment that he is surrounding us, he is protecting us, he is keeping us. How many know that the name of the Lord is a strong tower where the righteous run in and they are safe? And the king understands refuge because the city was supposed to be a city of refuge. And so when he's saying it from the perspective that God is our refuge, that he's looking at his present life, but he can also see God in, in a greater way, how God, how he's a refuge. David is a leader over Israel, but God is a leader over David, right? That he, that he surrounds us, he's a fortress around us, he's, he's a, he, he, he protects us from seen and unseen dangers, and so we can understand in Christ, we are safe. Come on, turn to him and say, you're safe, you're safe. Come on, you got to keep that in mind, after everything that's going on, that you're safe, that you are okay, that it's not just, it's not the building that you're in, it's the relationship that you're in. The fact that you're with God and God is in you, he, he was going to make sure that you are safe. He will keep you in perfect peace whose minds are stayed on him. So as long as your focus is on God, he, you're going to be safe. You don't have to worry about what you can see and can't see because you understand that God can see what you cannot see. God can see whatever's coming against you, and he's already formulated a plan for whatever comes your way. Amen? God is our refuge. Thank you, Lord, that we can rely on him, that if we understand that who keeps us safe, God keeps us safe. 
Does everybody understand? You wash your hands, you wear a mask, you do that stuff, but God keeps you safe. Yes, you got security around your house, you got guns in your cabinet, but God keeps you safe. God is our refuge. Does everybody understand he's our refuge? Does everybody understand he's watching over you? Does everybody understand he's keeping you, keeping your mind safe? Because when you think about a refuge, it's about in here that you need to be safe. He gives your mind needs to be covered because God doesn't want you walking in fear. God doesn't want you acting in fear, doing crazy stuff because you're scared. No, God has not given us a spirit of fear. He's given us love, power, and a sound mind. He wants our decisions to be sound. He wants our decisions to be based on the word of God, not based on anxiety, not based on a present circumstance, not based on a temporary problem, but we make our decisions based on faith, not on fear, that God is for us. Oh, you're in the right place today. I'm going to get on the devil's nerves today. You're in the right place today. God is our refuge. If anybody asks you, God, then why are you, why are you, why are you feeling good when everything else is around you and all this fear is out here? Because God is my refuge. God is taking care of me. He is my peace. I can't use my own peace. My own peace goes away. He said, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, because the world will give it to you and take it away from you. But the peace he releases unto you is an eternal peace. It keeps you. God is. We sing a song, don't we, that God is our everything. Don't we? He, one of those things is everything, that he's our refuge. And our strength, because we can't do it in our own strength. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. He is our strength. When you when you depleted your own natural strength, when you don't have any facilities in your muscles at all, he's talking about a mental strength that he'll give you, an eternal strength. The Holy Spirit will give you strength. The Lord is our strength. That's how you keep making it through stuff. See, you're sitting beside people that have made it through stuff. You don't See, you don't even know everything that everybody has gone through, but they have made it through stuff. They made it through bad relationships. They made it when somebody passed away that they love. They made it through stuff. And they're sitting, God is your strength because you, you didn't think you were going to make it in the moment, but that's been a year since then. That's been two years since then. He's been giving you strength when you didn't have any strength. Yes? Thank you, God. God is our refuge and strength. Thank you, Lord. So he surrounds me and protects me. And where I am in Christ is a refuge, a place of peace. But he gives me strength. Now, this is this is not the strength to, to fight the enemy. Because if he's saying he's our refuge, the enemy can't get to you. When he's talking about having strength, he's talking about having strength not to do anything stupid. He's talking about having strength not to fall back into stuff that he pulled you out of. He's talking about having strength not to fall into stuff, not to be caught up in stuff, not to allow people to entice you or manipulate you or pull you. Into, God, give me strength. The Lord is my strength. Did you read? Did you read Matthew where it says, "Deliver me from evil"? He didn't say keep evil from me. He said, "Deliver me from evil." Sometimes I find myself in stuff. Sometimes I find myself going back to stuff that I should not go back to. So I. I need strength to say no when my body is saying yes. I, I need strength to say no when everything around me is pushing me in that direction. God, you know what's best for me. Give me strength to walk away from something that I'm trying to walk into. Oh, you better hear me. You better hear me. He says, look, the Lord is our refuge. So he's protecting us from the outside. But he's our strength, which means he's also protecting us from the inside. We said before, Bear has been repeated, that the greatest enemy is the inner me. It's one thing for people to say stuff about you because you can ignore people. You can, you can just you can just go on about your business, never talk to them again, or just you can unfriend them or whatever it is that you might do to cut them off. But when it comes to your enemy, your inner me, we're talking about your wants, your desires of that, that might not be lined up with God. And he said, God, give me strength. Yes? How many know you need strength, don't you? How many need strength not to cuss out your coworkers? How many? Let's be honest. Let's just, let's just be honest while we Give me strength not to do anything crazy. Yes? Yes? You know you got a gun at the house, but give me strength not to carry the gun to work. Aren't we seeing that now? 
But are we seeing that as a part of our generation now that people get upset, they get they get anxious, and they move emotionally, and they do something permanently that messes up not only their life, but the life of others. And so, Lord, you give us strength to be smart. Yes? How many know, how many know that common sense is a, is a good thing, too? Not just... Not just biblical sense, but how about common sense? That you know, that you know, that you know, that I should not do that. God, give us, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. That at the moment that I need him, he is there. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so what, he, what, he's, what he's assuring us of in verse 1 is that you don't have to call for him to come. He's already there. That in the midst of what you're dealing with, you can thank him rather than calling for him to come. But thank you that you're already here to help me out in the situation that I'm in. I'm glad. See, I'm glad I don't have to pick up the phone or try to find you or to, or to text you 12 times to see if you respond. But one of those things, God is always there, a very present, very present help in trouble. In trouble, when trouble comes, because it rains on the just as well as the untrust. Sometimes life just happens, and you could be doing everything right. You could cross every T, dot every I. You could give a tithe and offering. You could sing falsetto. You could sing soprano. You could come and clap to everything, lay on the floor, and call out to God. But sometimes life happens that is outside of your reach, and God is a very present help. In trouble. In the midst of that, to assure us that when trouble comes, God is already there. To keep me and keep me, keep me safe, to keep my mind safe when so I'm not overwhelmed. Because what we're dealing with now more than ever is depression. We, we, it's always been in the house of God, but it's been taboo to talk about it because we're supposed to be joyful. And we're supposed to be smiling all the time. And we're supposed to be hugging everybody. But there's times when people are going through, and they were going through before COVID even got here, and now all of a sudden they're isolated. Now you can't connect with the people you normally could connect with. And now all of a sudden the walls are talking to you, and sometimes people can't come over like they used to come over. We can't fellowship the way we used to fellowship. And so now the enemy is using that as a way to get people depressed and oppressed by the enemy. Because what do you think the news is doing? The news is spreading depression, is spreading fear and causing people to be anxious, causing the people to be overwhelmed. But how many know we got good news? That NBC is not the only news you're supposed to look at. CNN is not the only news you're supposed to look at. We got good news to let How many know the good news is that the bad news ain't true? How many know that God is going to take care of? That he's our refuge and our strength and a very present help in trouble. Thank you, God. Everybody say, therefore. Therefore, will not we fear? We're not going to fear. Verse 1 lets us know and encourages our heart. We're not going to fear because God is our refuge. And that's not to say not to say that fear won't come. Yes, because fear sometimes will come unexpectedly or whatever else. How many watch, how many watch, how many watch horror movies before you got saved? One, two. How many are still watching horror movies now that you saved? Okay, you understand at some point somebody's going to be walking in the house and everything's going to be fine and the music's going to change and something's going to jump out and grab hold of them. How many know that things come out of nowhere and will excite fear? But how many know that fear is not supposed to stay? Fear can happen, but it's not supposed to stay there. It's not supposed to dwell there when God is dwelling there. So sometimes you get hit out of nowhere with something that you are not expecting and it might be overwhelming at the moment, but you're not supposed to stay there. Thank you, God. When you see Joseph, when he's in a pit, he's not staying there and dwelling on the pit. It's how, how deep the pit is. He's not reminding himself it's dark in the pit. There's no water in here. But he's thinking about the vision that he got when he was young, that at some point I got to get out of here. And you got to have the mindset not to stay present. I read that earlier today, that you're supposed to press towards the mark, that you're supposed to forget those things which are behind and begin to reach to those things which are before and press towards the mark. 
well. He said at the very beginning in the Philippians, he said, I had not attained it already, but I was pressing after it. I continue to go after it because I cannot be focused on my future if I'm stuck in my past. I got to stay away from what used to be. I got to stay away from what could have been and should have been. I got to focus on the time I got now and to maximize the moments I have left and take full advantage the fact that God woke me up this morning. I can do better this week than I did last week. Are y'all with me? Therefore will I not fear. I'm not going to be scared. Though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried away in the midst of the sea, come on, talk it. Us will roar. Be in trouble, though the mountains will shake with the swelling thereof. He said, I, I can look and see all these natural disasters happening around me, that the earth is shaking around me, that mountains are being removed, that there's hurricanes and tornadoes, there's, there's all types, there's tsunamis that are taking place, but yet, listen to verse 4, yet there, please say amen to me. See, because here's what you got to understand about the river is that he's not even supposed to be talking about the river in Psalm 46 because the river is Re Revelation 22. So he got a revelation while he was while he was safe in God, God revealed to him that there's something that you need to look forward to rather than where you are right now. He said, there is a river. And I look, what, what river are you talking about? Revelation, the last book of Revelation said, there is a river there. There's a city make of glad. There's a river there. And he wants you to understand there's a place in God. There's, there's a, an eternal place that God has for you. So this present place may pass away, but eternally you'll be with God and you will be fine. And there's a river that's there that you don't have to worry about. There's a river of life that's there that you can draw straight from, that you can draw nourishment from. He's preparing us for something greater. How many know there's life beyond this life? That you gotta be reminded. Sometimes we, we're spending, we're spending eighty years. We're spending eighty years so that our last ten years can be good. You can be working sixty years so I can rest the last twenty. But how many know you're supposed to be working all your years for God? Because this short life over here does not compare to an eternal life you'll have over there. So while you're spending time working for your retirement, now we're talking about a spiritual retirement that you're going to have with God, that you won't have to worry about dollars and cents. You don't have to worry about what you stashed away, what you scrolled away in your 401k. You don't have to worry about that. We're talking about an eternal place in God to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. How many know it's so important to punch that ticket that you know eternally you're going to be with God? That's why we got peace. That's why we have peace, knowing that God will take care of us, not only here, but in after. That we're not going to be eternally in a coffin. We're not going. We're not going. We're not going to just evolve into the abyss. No, no, no. We, and better still, we're not going. We're not going to go off into purgatory and, and spend a weekend there and then get out. Eternally, we'll be with Him. And so a peace comes to know that when we have loved ones that have passed away before us, the next reunion you have with your loved one will not be severed again. When you get a chance to meet those people that have gone before you, whether it's a grandmother or a mother or a father that went before you, when you get reunited there, it's going to be eternal. And there'll be no separation. It hurts when we separate down here, but when we reconnect over there, there'll be no separation, and he will be our peace and our refuge over there, and we will rest in God knowing everything is well. Amen? He's saying that verse 2 and verse, verse 3, that there's going to be natural disasters around us, but his focus is not what's happening naturally. His focus is on something spiritual. He got Somewhere along the way in Psalm 46, the psalmist Got a picture of that river. Got like a snap. An river shall clad the city of God. The river talks about in Revelation 22 goes through the city. The whole place of the tabernacles of Mosai, God is in the midst of it. Amen? She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early, the heathen rage. Doesn't it look like? It looks like the world is winning at times. But they're really losing. He said the heathen rage, the kingdoms were moved 
he uttered his voice and the earth melted. That's going to, he's saying there's going to be an end to all the drama at some point. Well, God will utter his voice and put an end to all the other kingdoms. He will put an end to all the nonsense that's happening even at that present moment now. When his voice appears, all the other stupid stuff has to stop. Is it all right that I say stupid from the pulpit? It's all right? Okay, talk to the pastor about it. Because you, you need to know that some of the things that are being done are not godly at all. And not done in peace at all. Does anybody understand that? That there's no, there's no real the agenda that's really happening is meant to divide us. The agenda now is meant to separate us. To, to cause us not to connect. To try and racially divide us. Not just throughout the week, but even on Sunday morning. Try to divide us even in the house of God. Doesn't want us to connect. Does anybody understand that we are one body and many members? How many understand that we are one race and not multiple races? That, does anybody understand that? There's not, do, you understand, do you understand there's not going to be a black section or a white section in heaven? Yes? Does anybody understand that? Okay, if you understand that, if you understand that then, if there's any inkling in which racism might be there, heaven, might, heaven is not your home. Heaven is not your home. If, if you got an issue with a brother or sister based on their skin color, heaven is not your home. And it makes no difference how long you've been in church, how much you've given to the church, or what office you hold in church. If you have an issue with a brother or sister based on skin color, you got to ask God to work that out because you cannot stand before the Lord and then get in and be eternally beside somebody that you dislike. Because... Okay, okay, you need more, you need okay, that sounds like a soapbox, Pastor. I need some scripture with that. How can you how can you say you love God who you have not seen and hate your brother who you do see? Is that enough scripture for you? So you gotta keep in mind that when it comes to being our refuge and our strength, that God is keeping all of us. Now he's not now he's gonna keep all of us and protect us from the enemy, and he's also protecting us from the enemy. He shouldn't have to protect us from one another. How many know that we're doing an enemy's work when we're fighting each other? How many know that the enemy enemies flees uh, when churches don't get together? The enemies flees when people say because you're Baptist, because you're Pentecostal, because you're you're Methodist, because you're Catholic, that we can't really associate with you. Because how many know if Jesus, your daddy, and he's my daddy, and it makes us siblings? Yes. So, okay, okay, because there's going to be a whole lot of people that get in that you didn't think should have got in. Does anybody understand that? And at some point in time, somebody might scratch their head and wonder how you got in. Do you understand that his love is towards all of us? Do you understand that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved? All right. There's a rhythm. Makes the city glad. God is The Lord of hosts, verse 7 said, the Lord of hosts, that's Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. He's our refuge. Thank the Lord. The one who, he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the same God that took care of them is taking care of us. Right? He's reminding you that he's been in this business of taking care of people for a long time. And you are not exempt from his care. Does anybody understand? He's been doing that before you got here. Right? He said, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations have he made in the earth? He was cleaning some things up. In verse 9, he maketh wars to cease or to stop, to put an end on the earth. He breaketh the bow. All the instruments they were using for warfare, he has broken. And cutteth the spear in sunder, he burneth the chariot in fire. Thank you, God. What was, what's good about it, before we go a little bit further and close it out, what was the, the best part of being delivered from Egypt is when he spoke and said that the enemies you've seen before, you will see no more. There comes a point in time where God puts an end to whatever's been chasing after you. Does everybody understand that you don't, that the, see, because the issue, 
the issue was is that he had to get rid of them completely because otherwise when they got on the other side, they would still hear the chariots. They would still be afraid of every time they heard a horseman come by. They would be anxious. But God, he took care of their enemies once and for all. And he's saying there in the text that the desolation that's going to come, he's going to be the one behind it. He's going to clean some stuff up in such a way that the people that tried to wage warfare against you won't even have the instruments to fight you with. He said he's going to break the bow and the spear, and he's going to burn the chariot. That's why we told you from the get-go that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Why won't they prosper? It's because God already broke them. God already got rid of them. He already knew what they were trying to use against you, and he broke it to pieces and even burned of it. This is what it says. Verse 10. Turn to the neighbor and say, listen to verse 10. Come on, turn your other neighbor and say, listen to verse 10. You were talking to the wrong neighbor. Say, listen to verse 10. Be still and know that I'm God. See, the psalmist, the psalmist was singing one through nine. And the Lord so enjoyed what was being sung, he responded. How many know that that's what's so important about praise and worship is that it creates an atmosphere for the word of God to come in. And so when we think about praise and worship happening in the house, it makes the atmosphere conducive for the prophetic word or the, or the present word. He gives us words after the word, after the worship had gone forth. And God responded in 10, be still and know that I'm God. Be still. Be still does not mean to stop working. Be still means that while you're working, you're working knowing that, that everything within you is, is no longer anxious, is no longer overwhelmed. Be still. Be still does not mean stay in the house, get a remote, put it on TV. Yes? One, is there one amen back over there? Is it? I need some amen. Is there any amen on the left? Yes? Yes? Thank you, Lord. I mean, I said before, how many know that the mask is not just for coronavirus, it's for donuts. It's for, it's, yes, it is. It's for, it's for that third slice of apple pie where you're stuck in the house. That's what that mask helps you. Huh? He says, be still and know that I'm God. And, 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 and see, be still means that you're going to have a confidence because it's one thing for you to be still, it's another thing for you to know. The reason why you can be still is that you're going to know that he's God. You're going to see his hand. It's just one thing for the preacher to preach about it, and he all loud every single week talk about how good God is. But it's a whole nother thing when you experience him in your living room, in your own life, away from church, where there is no praise and worship, where you realize that God really is who he said he was and how he came through in a situation maybe that you weren't even praying for. But he just showed up and showed out for you and revealed to you that somebody else is taking taking care of you, and somebody else really is concerned about your situation. Be still and know that I'm God. I will be exalted amongst the heathen. I will be exalted amongst the earth. The same people that try to say that there was no God are going to have to acknowledge there is a God. Do you hear that's that's what he's saying right there. He's saying the same people that were critical about the Jesus that you serve and that you're going to church again on Sunday. You know there's a virus out there. You should stay at home and the church doors shouldn't be open. But the moment somebody else gets sick, they're going to need somebody to pray for them. And then who's going to pray for them? And then who's going to show up for them? It's God that's going to help them out. He said, I'll be exalted amongst the heathen, the same people that will try to acknowledge that there is no God at all, that God isn't in the midst of anything going on, they're going to know that something something miraculous is going to take place that the earth is going to see, I'm prophetically speaking to you. There's a whole lot of stuff that's going on now, but there's, there's, there's something that God is about to do that's going to be so miraculous that it will not be discounted, that everybody's going to see it and know that it was a miracle. Does everybody understand that? 
So he's saying that he either going to have to acknowledge it because everybody's got phones right now and you're not going to say it's photoshopped. You can't say that Final Cut put a little something in it. He's going to be something's going to be so obvious that God pulled this thing off that everybody's going to have to acknowledge God was with them. God, God was on their side. That's what he's about to do. Be still and know that I'm God. Have the confidence. Have the assurance. And be reassured that even in the midst while you're knowing God at the same time, he's going to let you know because sometimes hanging in there is a difficult thing too. But he's saying be still. Be still, be still, be still that you've, that you've done enough in that situation. Is that helpful anybody? Because sometimes we're thinking and wishing, I wish I could do more. No, no. You've done all you need to do at this present moment, at this juncture. God is saying enough is enough. Let me now take over the reins from here. When he says be still, he said you no longer have to keep putting your hands in it. You no longer have to keep checking on to see how it's doing, but be still and know that I'm God. Does everybody understand what be still means? Be still just means that you just be patient and allow what works to work. Amen? Does anybody still bake in here before we go to verse 10, verse 11? Does anybody still cook? Does anybody, please, thank you, God. You mean to tell me you've been stuck in a house and haven't picked up a cookbook and gotten no kind of tricks? You, may, you, you should know how to cook now. Doing this, if you, you should be able to figure out something. Yes? Listen, listen to this, because we're, we're trying to bring this home to you. Because you understand that the whole process, again, we try to... I'm trying to say pray for the pastor, pray for the pastor. I'm trying, to, I'm, trying to give you, I'm trying to give you another analogy that doesn't have to deal with dessert, but dessert's on my mind at the present moment. I'm trying to give you something different other than donuts. I'm going to talk to you about cake at the present moment. How many of you know that once you put the cake in the oven, that you're not supposed to keep opening the door every five minutes? How many know that when you open it? Yes. How many know when you open the door every five minutes that you're extending the process? I'm glad some people still do cook in here, don't they? How many know that every time you open the door, it takes about ten, maybe twenty degrees off of that, so it extends it by five or ten more minutes? Does anybody cook? So when he says "be still," it means be still, knowing that look, you can lick the bowl. Lick the, please lick the bowl while the cake's. That's what helps you wait, honey. What help, helps you wait is licking a bowl, licking a spoon, whatever. It, it helps you wait because you're going to smell cake in about 15, 20 minutes, and it helps you control yourself not to open the door, but to wait until it's finished. Turn to them and say, don't be anxious. Don't be anxious. Don't be Don't be anxious. Just let, just let God work his thing out. Let God smooth everything out. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I will be exalted amongst the heathen. I want you to be still. Just wait now. Be still, be still. Knowing that I'm going to step in now and complete what you started. I'm going to finish. See, because where we end that is where God begins. There are some things that he calls us to do that we can do on our own and we should do on our own. But then we've exhausted all of our options. We've depleted all of our strength. He immediately steps in and says, be still. Because you can't do any more than you've already done. I'm trying to help somebody before I get out of here. Because I see, because sometimes because what happens now is the enemy tries to get you to beat yourself up to say that you should be doing more. No, 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 no. I'm being still because I've done all that I've been required to do. Now, God has to put the icing on the cake and finish everything off. Does everybody hear what I'm saying? Thank you, God. The Lord is the Lord of hosts is with us. He said it again a second time in verse 11. Because it's weird. Even verily, verily, truly, truly, surely, surely. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Say lot. He says it again. Let me give you one last scripture before we close. Ephesians 3.20. Ephesians 3.20. He's an Ephesians 3.20 God. Ephesians 3.20 says he can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all 
we could ever ask, think, or imagine. He's going to exceed our expectation. When he says to be still, he's saying, now just hold on and watch me work. And when you watch God work in one area, you then get begin to see God work in all the areas. Because he's going to fix what you prayed about. Yes, he will. He's going to fix what you prayed about. But he's also going to make better what you thought was already good. He exceeds our expectation. He, go, he goes beyond whatever we could even ask, think, or imagine. Does everybody understand? And we're going to know that we know that we know. We're going to have our own personal, t all of us in here have testimonies, but there's going to be a testimony that we keep going back to that we know God pulled out for us. He's going to do exceedingly, abundantly above all. We can even ask, think, or imagine. He's going to surprise you. Lord, I didn't, I didn't even think that you were going to work in that area. And God, how did you smooth that out? How did he smooth it out? It's because you're no longer focused on it anymore, and you're no longer putting any strength in it anymore, and now God has an opportunity to, to be God rather than you doing it yourself and giving yourself credit. Now that you have moved away from it, God has room to get glory out of it. Yes? He'll get glory out of your story, out of your life. That, the, that some of the things that you've gone through or been through has just been a setup for what God is about to do in your life. The best is still yet to come. That's not, that's not cliche. That's kingdom. Better is still on the way. Does everybody understand when we spoke about that the latter house shall be greater than the former? There's something better coming. The latter house was good. I mean, the former house was good, but the latter is even greater. He said, I went, with your, your future is greater than your past. And don't allow, don't allow the enemy to talk you out of your destiny. Don't allow the enemy to creep into your mind to cause you to discount what God is about to do. Thank you, Lord. Or to wish. You know what you're doing when you're wishing for the, for the good old days? You're saying God can't be better. Lord, I wish I had that time back. And Lord, I wish I had that moment back. I wish I had that. No, no, no. The Bible says that he can, he can restore the years to you. And when you're wishing for something that he took away from you, you also, you also discounted what he's about to give you. Focus on what's in front of you. Stay focused. God's people have to stay focused. God's people can't be overwhelmed in the present circumstance that we're in. Because the people the people that will be overwhelmed are going to start looking for hope. And they're going to start looking for hope in droves. And if they're scared in the house, thank you, Lord. If they're scared in the house, where are they going to get hope from? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. And more preaching about Jesus needs to happen rather than politics. Please say amen to me. Amen. Let's make, let's make sure that Jesus matters. Let's make sure that Jesus is the center of it all. That's the song, y'all, to, to know that whatever's going on around us, Jesus is the center of everything that's going on, everything that will go on, everything that's about to happen, that Jesus is the focal point. And we're not to lose sight of him in the midst of an election season. We're not Democrat or Republican. We're followers of Christ. I know they want you to check a box in your political affiliation, and you can do that. But you got you need to know you need to check the box in God to know that you stand for Christ, regardless of who's in office, who's about to be in office, who's about to come in Congress, who's about to go into Senate. How many know that God is still on the throne? So God's people have to understand that He, if it, if anything's going to change, it's going to happen in the house first. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves. The reason, see, and see, when he says God's people have to humble themselves, that means somewhere along the way, God's people got high minded. 
that we somewhere along the way God's people started ego tripping and started forgetting what their assignment was and started looking down at people rather than looking across at people. But we got to get back to the place that we're just praying, that we gossip on our knees. How about that? Amen? That we gossip on our knees. Everybody stand to your feet if you can. Thank you, God. Stand to your feet if you can. I want to keep our sister Cammie in prayer. She was in my, on my heart this morning. Thank you, Lord. I got a chance to see a couple people yesterday. Regina and Shanice yesterday. I saw also James and Susie yesterday. Let's keep them covered in prayer as well. We serve a good God. Amen. If you don't know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, would you come forward at this moment? Otherwise, you're, you're just existing. Things might be working well for you, but the Bible says you're just existing if you don't have God. He came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. You haven't really lived yet until you accepted Christ, until you allowed him in. That's when you begin living. That's when, that's when you're born again and you start over. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. If you don't know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, would you come forward at this moment to receive me into your heart today? The Bible says we're going to rejoice. We're going to rejoice. The Bible says angels rejoice when a soul is saved. We're going to rejoice as well. We're not going to look at you because you, you might have been judged your whole life already. You don't need another judgmental eye looking at you. We're going to rejoice as you come forward accepting God. Thankful that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thankful that when we get to heaven on the other side, we can laugh about it. It's a simple thing. But it has an eternal promise. I hear you. Out of respect for others, all heads bowed and eyes closed, you're not looking to the left, left to right. I heard you. I want what you're talking about. I don't want to walk through it. You don't have to. Jesus called out everybody openly. So we call out people openly here in the church to come forward. We also know that he's a gentleman too. Doesn't want you to feel ashamed. But yet knocking on the door of your heart. He can meet you where you are. If you don't if you want Jesus to come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior today. You can stand where you are, raise your hand, and I'll pray. I'll lead you to a prayer. He can meet you where you stand at. You have to walk. All you got to do is raise your hand. Praise the Lord. after me, Lord, forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my God. I believe that you died for me. gave your life for me. I now surrender my life to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you now in the name of Jesus, dear Lord, for, for heaven's doors receiving another today. We thank you in the name of Jesus for for better days. We thank you right now, Father, for, for an end to this COVID crisis, God. We thank you, Father, that the, that the heathen will, will know who you are. We thank you that the world is about to see you magnified. I thank you that the world is going to see you on the news, on cell phones, on, on tablets, on laptops. I thank you that it's going to be such a, an amazing thing to see your handiwork in the midst of everything going on that people are going to have to give glory to you, have to give honor to you, because they're going to know that God was in the midst. Thank you, Lord, for being our refuge. 
Thank you for being our present help in a time of trouble. Thank you for meeting every need that was spoken and unspoken. Thank you for your shalom, that there's nothing missing and nothing broken. Thank you for fixing every area of our lives, God. Thank you for making every crooked path straight today. Kid, God, I hear the Lord saying he's beginning to work on relationships. I hear the Lord say he's beginning to work on relationships because in the midst of this season that we've been in, uh, you see people in a different way. And so sometimes, sometimes work can be a wedge. That in the process of grinding all your time and working all your time, it's becoming to be a wedge in your relationship. You're working a lot of hours, and yet you're providing financially, but you also need to provide emotionally. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you right now that relationships can be reconciled, Fix and make better. I thank you for people renewing, renewing their vows, and not only renewing them but remembering them. I thank you for open dialogue, dear Lord, and I thank you for, I thank you for discussions without animosity, without, without anger. I think, people, I think that people will begin to discuss and talk about the future and not feel judged or feel judgmental. I thank you in the name of Jesus that you're making everything better. Lord, we give you all the honor today. We give you all the praise today. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Come on, come on, clap better than that because somebody gave their life to God today. Somebody opened their heart today. The Bible said the angels rejoice. How many know that God is still blessing in the midst of this season that we're in? That he's still blessing his people. Is all, is all hearts clear before we close today? I think a reminder for you today was is that we are having a church meeting today, immediately following the service today. For those that want to remain after uh, for the church meeting today, uh, we also had sent a message out for those that are online or watching online. They can log in via Zoom to participate. Uh, we serve a good God, amen? We serve a good God. Uh, we just want to update you on some of the things going on as far as the church, uh, what we God for, where we're headed towards, uh, what sort of things they were sort of set in motion, what things are being activated as we speak even now. Uh, we want to update you on that. So if you, uh, if you want to stay after, uh, we'll, we'll receive you after a few minutes after service, give you a chance to run out, and any business, whatever, and then we'll meet here in the sanctuary again in about 10 minutes. 10 minutes or so. Uh, my handsome son. Wave your hand, son. I saw you waving just a minute ago. Could you wave your hand, son? CDC requires that we have multiple exits here in the church so you can exit out door number one, which was the door that you came in, or where my handsome son is, carrying door number two. Amen. Uh, our offering is before and after service. The pillars on the back, the white pillars, the basket there to give you offering before or after service. Thank you for your faithfulness and for helping the ministry and for your obedience unto God. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Also, thank you for just being here today, seeing your faces continue, being in the house together today. That's a blessing. It's a blessing. I said before also as well, invite people to church. Let people know the church door is open. We are socially distant. We got enough hand sanitizer to make sure all of us clean. We got enough masks for everybody. If you came in with one, if we didn't have one, one to offer for you. We got stylish hands. 
We got ones with Eden on them. Yes? Yes? We got some of them that say, if you can read this, you're too close. We got some of them too. Whatever you need, honey, because we, we want you in the house. Invite people invite people to church. Let people know that uh, we're meeting every requirement that's necessary to invite people to church. You shopping, you going out everywhere else, you can come to church. Amen? I seen you at Walmart. I saw you at Belk. I saw you in the coach store running out of there with three bags in the coach store. You come to church. Amen? We all right. We all right. We all right. We all right. Is parts clear before we close today? Debbie, come. Debbie Collins. Remember our sister Debbie. Remember her in prayer today. Also remember Kyle and Katie as well. Remember Debbie today specifically in your prayer time, whether it be here or maybe we'll have a little moment after in our church meeting afterwards. We'll lift her up as well. Uh, but remember Debbie Collins today. All hearts clear. Yes. Charles and Irene. Remember Charles and Irene. Mama. Everybody, who's everybody's mom? with us today. She's been a little short of breath and so your prayers. Keep her in prayers as well. Danny and our sister Kyra. Uh, remember them in prayer today. Remember them. Thank you, God. Yes. Tomorrow. Stretch your hands towards a little girl today. Thank you, God. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus that every hand that is stretched forth for her is releasing peace to her and comfort to her. To know that when she goes into surgery tomorrow, that everything will be well. But not only for the little girl, but also to ease the heart of her mother. To know that everything will be fine. God is our refuge and our strength a very present help in trouble. We thank you in the name of Jesus for good reports, and we thank you that the, that the surgery will not be as evasive as first thought or mentioned, and we thank you for a speedy and miraculous recovery. And we just thank you right now, Father, for, for the laughter of this young girl, dear Lord, and knowing that after this is over, that everything will be done with and done away with. We thank you for no future surgeries that will have to take place, we thank you that you will fix this once and for all. Lord, we give you all the honor today, and we thank you for comfort tonight, and no fear tomorrow morning. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Let's receive the blessing. The ten hot minutes uh, to go. I uh, want you also excuse the kitchen. In the kitchen as well, we had where some of the tile had fell some that was wet and some of the tile had fell. We're gonna have that fixed next Friday. So there's a spot in the kitchen that we have that's open to dry out, and then we'll have to put new sheet rock up in a couple of days. So just be mindful of in the kitchen as well. All hearts clear before we close. Good to see you all today. Also, those that are, are seeking baptism, know about that. We want to do that in the month of September. We want to get that out of the way in September. So let me know if people are interested in that. Bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and grant thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Eden, Israel, and the United States, and God will bless them. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.